Tell me your story. I want to hear your story. Here is the fourth edition of Coming to America. This is the bilingual edition, Edición Bilingüe. So you have 24 stories, 24 stories of students, recently arrived students, one to two years, here in Central Florida, that have come from different countries, countries representative in this book of 10 different countries. 24 stories representative of, 20, of 10 different countries. Now, most of these kids arrive with limited English proficiency. They call them LEP, now they're called emerging bilinguals. But slowly, said fastly, and gradually, these students are given the opportunity through a strategy called every child coming to America. Every child coming to America. So I want to hear your story. Tell me a story. My story goes that in 1988, I was hired as a very, very young teacher uh, in New York City. I was a, an ESL high school bilingual teacher, English as a second language teacher. And I had students coming in the public school system in New York from different countries, El Salvador, Honduras, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Cuba. I mean, you name it, they were there. And I had kids with different levels, in, in different levels of English language proficiency. I had, I had a student that I'll never forget her. I mean, she didn't even speak Spanish or she came from one of these countries and her her language was kind of a mixture of indigenous with native. I mean, it was just, you couldn't understand her at all. And this, this student who was 16 at the time was placed in high school. She had never been to school before. She was in high school and she had to learn English. And here was Mr. Hernandez, right? It was a process for me and, and I had to go, I had to really get back go down and really start working with the basics, the ABCs, the one, two, threes, the months of the year, a lot of total physical response, a lot of making sure that I connected with her in terms of her culture. And I mean, she didn't make it all the way up to, to high school, but as a high school student, she pretty much developed her grade level from where she was at the beginning. But one day, one day, I was at the, uh, in my classroom and we were invited all of a sudden to take our groups, our ESL groups, to the library. And there in the library, uh, we were told that this New York City poet, street poet, was gonna do a presentation. First thing that I thought was, what does this guy know about teaching English? Or what does this have to do with my class anyway? What am I doing in the library with this guy? I'm wasting my time. But the truth is that uh, observing, observing him get uh, in, in, in this ritual of getting ready, uh, uh, his name was uh, Jesus Abraham, AKA Tato La Viera. And uh, may he rest in peace, he died a few years ago. And he was getting ready for his performance. And uh, I was, I, you know, the kids were getting restless. He was dressed in white darker than I am. And uh, so that gave him kind of a, I mean, you know, his, his color stood out, his colors stood out. Uh, and then he came in with uh, congas, you know what congas are? And he started like, and I'm like, when is this guy gonna start reading his poetry? And uh, all of a sudden he starts playing with the congas and he screams and yells and says, Boricua! And I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. When I heard that word, I was like, what is going on? And the students started yelling. They got up from their seats. They started, hey, wow. And I'm like, but these kids are not all Puerto Ricans. Boricua is the, that, that name, that proud native name uh, used to call Puerto Ricans Boricua. So, I mean, these kids were different ethnicities, different backgrounds. And they were screaming and yelling. Somewhere 
the word connected with their background. And he just got it, you know, we are a people who love to love. We are a people who love to love. Respect. And then he started saying, we have a lot of black and white people whom we befriend. That's why we say, let there be no prejudice on race. Color is generally colorblind to us. Boricua. I mean, he just continued and continued. And we were like, oh my goodness gracious. And I'm like, how come I didn't get that kind of response in my English classroom? What was I missing out? So that's what, that was the beginning of my journey. I was in 1988. This is 2021. So this is exactly 21 and 12, 39 years ago. 21 and 12, oh my goodness gracious. My math is not that good, right? 33 years ago, I had this experience. And it started, it started a journey. I mean, I said to myself, I have to start using, incorporating, supplementing, bringing some of that literature in the classroom to get the students fired up and then, and then help them cross the bridge from one side to another so that they can make it to the other side of the bridge, pay the toll and learn English at the same time. So that has been my journey and that's my story. In Florida, 2014, relocating to Florida, I find myself with the same student demographics right in front of me. Students from El Salvador, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Colombia, Japan, from all over the world. And once again, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm going to have to build bridges here somehow, some way. But this time, I, I was really interested in looking for a piece of the puzzle that was really going to help me take them from step one to step two, three, four, so that they can become academically competent. Master the skills, pass the exams, everything at the same time. I wanted them to get ready. I wanted them to read the classics, the American British classics. Why not? But I wanted, it to be, I wanted them to be proud of themselves. I wanted them to be, uh, to be able to get deep down inside of themselves first so that they can cross the bridge and learn English at the same time. So I ran into a unit called Coming to America. And the unit was about the first European settlers that made it to Cape Cod 1620, 401 years ago. They made it to Cape Cod, these pilgrims, Puritans. Now, that's not my story, that's not their story. And it might not, may not be your story, but what is your story? So I say, wait a minute, the kids that I have in front of me relocated to America. They're coming to America, just like the pilgrims came to America. Therefore, and Will, William Bradford's of Plymouth Plantation is a depiction from Bradford's point of view of what happened before, during, and after the voyage to the New World, to Cape Cod. So I asked my students, how many of you would like to write your story? What's your story? I asked them. Very few answered yes, that would take them to work with me after school. Teach them the basics, the basics, the, the writing process, the pre-writing, the brainstorming, the drafting, the editing, the revising. Get them to write their stories in Spanish or in their native language, which it, was, it wasn't always Spanish, to get them to write their stories in Spanish and then get them to cross the bridge to write their stories in English. At the same time, their connection with literature was, went from one level to the next. At the same time, they became academically competent. They also 
were able to publish their stories in a book like this one. And this is the fourth edition. It's not only the book. The students were also able to use their stories as scholarship essays. And many of these kids that you see here today are in college with scholarships written based on their stories published in this book. There's a testimony of one of the students. He himself has said, he himself has said that he has earned over $24,000 scholarships in a simple one person point of view narrative about his journey of coming to America. What is your story? Every child coming to America, every child coming to America is not only a strategy, it's an alternative that I'm sharing with those of you that are listening to this presentation. Every child coming to America is an alternative that is going to be shared with public schools, private schools, charter schools, colleges and universities all across the United States. And the purpose is to help our students, our second language learners, help them to cross the bridge, to learn English, to become academically competent, to help them transform themselves into college and career, academically competent students, not only to master them, the skills, but to become proactive, critical thinkers at the same time. Every child coming to America, students writing their stories, that's number one. Writing their stories, publishing their stories in a book. Making them cross the bridge, transform their stories into winning scholarship essays. Number two, the same students, every child coming to America, the same students empowering them to come back to school, to schools in the area in cities, in districts, across the United States of America to impact students themselves, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old students, undergraduate students coming back to school and mentoring students to help them master the skills. That's number two. And number three, also digging deep into the skills, into the heart of these kids so that they too can speak, express themselves, become leaders, share their ideas without getting in the way of their particular ideas or ideologies. It's just students writing their stories, finding out who they are, where they come from, and where they're going. Every child coming to America, A, is coming to a city near yours, Take advantage. You may be the first one listening to this video. If you are, maybe you're the second, maybe you're the third, maybe you're the 100th person listening to the video. But at the same time, I'm asking you to share it. Number two, if you are a teacher, if you are an administrator, a principal, an education consultant, A, here I am. Send me a message. Find me on social media. And I will get back to you and every child coming to America will be, can become an alternative that you too can share with your students and with your communities. Have a great rest of your day.